the today's session about introduction to the docker how can we use that so basically we're going to see um, what is docker what is container installation we're not going to go through because docker is already installed into our system and uh, then we're going to go through the basic command then see the docker file example and then we're going to look into the volumes so what is docker anybody wanted to explain it Docker basically is a container runtime, which provides a tool set to build application or containerize application or containers, manage the container, run the container locally, also build the container image, custom image, and push it to a public or private repository. Okay. Now, in our system, what we have is we have Docker CLI. Along with that, we have Docker Runtime and WSO Windows Hub System for Linux for running Docker is application. And also, we have Hyper version enable that helps us to run Docker container in a virtual setup. Now, question comes the container runtime is if there is Docker, what is a container? We can say container is basically a package application which has all the dependencies it requires to run. For example, if I'm creating a Java application, what is the main dependency I will be requiring? I will be requiring Java runtime. Okay. So also mostly the Docker container are having Linux system, so minimal Linux distribution. And any kind of other tools or commands that will be cleared, but that is there. Now, also along with that, we can put configuration either as a form of file or we can mention environment variables. Okay. Docker having portable package. So after we build what is creates, what Docker built is a basically image. So that particular Docker image is basically a portable package. And you can share the portable package provided you publish the package to a repository. It may be a private repository like a CR, or it may be a public repository like a Docker Hub from where you can download. Any questions so far? Hello. No, sorry. Oh. Now let's look into how it's enabling helping development and deployment.
So what problem the Docker solves? So normally, before the container, if you have to work with a particular project, for example, let's take an example of success maker. Those who have worked on that. It requires, this is a non-Dockerized application, right? So it requires set up of those softwares, Gradle, and Maven, etc. Also, you require a specific version of Java, right? So that is development installation we have to do. And these steps are different based on different application that we can ways that you can find. Some may be using Mac, some may be using Windows. So steps are different, the installation of Java. So this is not a single um, step to install the development environment. This is like a multi-step process, which may be error for, right? If we misconfigure certain steps. Now, when the container comes, what they provide? They provide the isolated environment. That means container which are running in an isolated environment. So they are not running on the our main system. They are running on a virtual machine, either VM box or hyper version. Okay. And they basically runs in a separate environment from the host environment. Okay. And the build Docker application has all the setups, all the dependency we built, and the configuration, all the start kit here. If I need to run, all I have to do is a docker run command. So one script to install and run the application, one for the build, another for running the application. Now let's understand few different things. What is container? What is image? What is version? What is that? And then we're going to look into some common Docker commands. So there is a confusion between a Docker image and a Docker container. What is the Docker container? Is it a runtime instance of a Docker image, a runtime environment of a Docker image? So when the Docker container runs, it runs in a it run within a virtual file system. So it's not a physical file system, but it's a virtual file system. Now, if I need to access the particular container application, for example, I like to open up a web application, right? Then I like to open up the web page. I may be dockerize the Angular or a React application. So obviously, I need to map the application port to my host port. Then only can I access. Because Docker container runs in their own separate isolated environment, including the name. And also they have their environment configuration. Now Docker images, what are the images? They are like images which we can use. For example, I wanted to use a post -its. Or maybe I wanted to use a Redis cache or MongoDB. Or for example, I wanted to have the Java DB there. Right? So images are either custom built or pre-built. They can be available in a Docker Hub or they can be a private like the AWS ECR, Elastic Container Repository. Okay. So let's, if, I, if my system doesn't have that particular image, what I can do, I can run the command docker pull image name. And then I can also list what are the images that have been downloaded. So if I wanted to put a image, so what I can do, docker pull redis. Okay, my daemon is not running. So daemon or the ranger desktop need to be done. Because Docker CLI interact with the daemon and perform those operations. So let me fire up the 
ब्रांचेड डिस्ट्रिक्ट Now, when we mention a particular image, is right. We have seen. I don't know whether we have seen the Docker Hub or not. Here we can see you're finding the different images that are there. RabbitMQ, Ubuntu, Visibox, Golag, MongoDB, HTTPD, Node.js, PHP, Redis, OpenJDK, MariaDB, Nginx. These are official images that we can use in our Here I can also search. So this is a build by Docker itself. Now on the left hand side, what you can see, these are different tags. Okay. It has been always the updated tag. Okay. Now, there are all linear based images, but still they have different two ways of CPU architecture based images are also available. So, my Docker demon is started. Then I can pull any image for that matter. By default, when I don't give the tag name, by default, latest version has been pulled out. Docker images are built a layer one top of another. That's why it's not a single layer, it's pulling, it's pulling the layer one by one by one. So, if I wanted to mention the tag, so I can mention the tag by image name colon latest or some other tags I can mention. Like for example, the version is 7.0. So, if I wanted to put 6.2.7, then I can put colon 6.2.7. And specifically, this is Alpine is basically another Linux distribution. That we can mention. Okay. So let's see. So it will take some time to get downloaded. Oh no. Oh no. We can download any official image because this is like a public one, right? And it is maintained by the Docker community. So here we can see the latest version is 7.0.5. If I wanted to use some other version like 5.0.14, I can download that version. Now it says, how can I run this option? So there are like different ways I can connect to this particular database. For that, I need to, after downloading the image, I have to run it. So it got stuck in there. So now, again, I'm pulling it. So now this time it has pulled. 
Now what I can see, how many images are there in my system? If I say there are many images are there, and out of that, there is like a Redis latest version that I pulled out. And this is the size of that particular image. Now what you need to do is, we need to run that Docker image using Docker run command. Docker run, then I'll have to name the image. I put Redis, the name of the image. Now when I put, it started, it is bound, uh, it is running on the particular port. Okay. But at the same time, it's created a console. Okay. So unless I can close the console, cannot do anything. Right. So it's another mode of running the console, running the Docker image in a detached mode or dash D. So now, if I wanted to stop this container, uh, this thing is running right. So what you can say, Docker PS, what are the processes are currently running? There are many processes are currently running. Out here, what is the detail is saying? This is the container ID, this is radius that is running. It is started like 25 seconds ago. Okay, it's bound to this port. And this is the name that they have given. Now, if I wanted to stop this, I can stop by copying this container ID. Container ID is nothing but a ID that uniquely identify container. Because in my system, there may be multiple containers which are running or not. Docker rm command is so we cannot just uh, we need to just stop this container. So first we're going to say stop in the container ID. And we can see it is automatically get stop out here. Okay. Now, if I again go back and see Docker PS, I don't see the radius image is there. Now, if I wanted to put A, then I'm going to see All the images, those are either running or stopped, including the Redis one. OK, the status it, it is currently exited. So only Docker PS when I put, it shows the up and running containers. And if I say Docker PS dash A, it shows all the one, including the container, which are already exited. Now let me remove the container also. So I just put rm remove the container. Now if I put Docker PS dash A, now I'm not going to be seeing the Redis container anymore. It is removed. Okay. Now another mode of running it. Docker run dash D detach move, so there will be no console use there. So just return me the ID of that particular container. Now, if we go here, I can say Docker PS. Now, can I see the Redis container is currently up? Okay. So, can I connect? To this Redis container, do I have any tool? Most probably I don't have any tool right now. Okay. So having been any tool, uh, like GUI tool is there, then I can able to connect to this. Now, now here we can also see the list of images. And from the images, I hope we're going to see the Redis one as well. Okay. okay. That the basic command we have seen, the detached mode of running, 
pulling that, checking the Docker images, and also running them. Now let's talk about the Docker port binding. So what is the Docker port binding is about? So when the Docker runs, it runs on a certain internal port. For example, Redis is running 6379. So, if I, what is the port binding is about? Port binding is about your container internally bound to a port, but that is with the container runtime, right? That is Docker. But it need to be mapped to the host port. And within the host, we have a limited number of port, like that is there. And if the port is bind already to a process, it cannot be rebind to another host machine. So that will cause a conflict. So how to bind this port? So we can do docker run dash p host port container port then the image name. So in our case, if we need to run the Redis on 679, then we can use docker run p 679, 679 Redis. Now let's try to run this. Now I also do the Docker PSA and uh, here it is bound to this port 67. Now, if I wanted to run this again in a detached mode, the port, port number 6379. It's an internal port. Now, we put Docker PS. Now you can see there is a difference. Now, there is actually the binding happens. The binding happen means this is the like the host port, and it is bound to the. The internal port that is there. Okay. Okay. So that is bound and that is running. Now, there another. Now, if I need to see the log, Docker log. I wanted to see the log of this particular. Redis container. This shows that this container is running with that particular port, okay. ready to accept the connection. Let us stop the another container that is running. Two Redis are currently running. Now, Why there is no conflict? Because this is like an internal port. It is not bound to the host port. So there is no conflict also there. And it also says that you can come from any particular outside port also from your network. And if you see 86379, you can connect to the internal port. So you can access the, from a GUI tool or CLI tool, you can access the Redis. Let me remove the container. Okay. Now here, if I again wanted to run the same command again by binding the port. Okay. So automatically, I get an error that bind for port 
6379 field because port is already allocated so host port that is already allocated to one instance you cannot associate with a second instance or second container because then the docker doesn't want to know that if the request has come to the host 6079 which container it need to send and obviously two different processes cannot bind to the uh or the same host port so now we can say we can come here we can say docker ps now here we can see only one redis container is up another redis container is written data okay now here we can see these containers have given some odd names right they have an arbitrary name so how can we change that we can change that by let us just copy this name and then let us also we can interact with them by the name along with the container ID. so now this is stopped now we can check it is not there similar thing we can use now rm so now if i do es dash a so redis is not there it is there it is created now what is created this is another redis that is running Let me also stop this. This is created, but it is not run, right? So Docker RM, it is removed. Now, if I go, so hopefully now I'm not going to be seeing any kind of Redis Docker's are there. Okay. How can we give our own name? For example, if I can come back here. And can I give a name? I can say cache one. Okay. Here I can check yes. The name is not needed because we have to put it before, I guess. Just check this. Remove this. That is already exited. That all we now. I wanted to run the Docker. If I put the name before, so now the Docker is run. Instead of taking the arbitrary name, it is taking the name that we have provided. That is Bashi one. Now, if we want, I can stop this instance using that particular name, Bashi one. 
And similarly, I remove the container after being stored. Just about your port binding and also name. Okay. So another thing is we have to see the logs. We have checked the logs. Now, how can I gain access to that particular container bash? So let's see this. Let me again run this. Here we have removed the cache. Here I'm again running it in a detached mode with a name with a port binding. So here it is started and check it is up. Now here can I connect to it? VXCC interactive IT. Then I can put cache one bin batch with the bin batch will work. So now I'm within the data directory. Within the data directory, there is no command is there in the host directory. So here I am able to access everything. Okay. Now similarly, if I wanted to move within the container data directory, I go on into data directory. There is nothing at this present moment. And I wanted to exit from the interactive shell, I can exit that. Okay. So that will help us to so what you have seen. We have seen the docker run command, docker ps, detach mode, stop. And we can also do the start also using the name on the container ID, psa. And then we have docker rm and docker rmi. OK. So what is the docker rmi? rmi is a removal of that particular image. So if we say docker images, right? So currently there is nginx is there right so if i wanted to remove the image whether it is not running so what the command i have to use rmi nginx so it is removed what is removed like if i don't mention in version always the latest one get removed now if i say talk on images I will find this particular nginx do exist. So what I have to do is I have to mention the version 1.16. So that 1.16 is now removed. It's no longer here. So that's how we can do this. Now, if I wanted to download anything apart from the latest and run it in a single command that is using docker run. So for example, out here, I wanted to pull out 5.0.14. So if I wanted to pull and run, at the same moment, I can do that using docker run radius, and I can put the 5.0.14. So here I specifically mention which version or which tag I use, right? So that I pull. So locally, it doesn't have the version. It only has the version latest one. So it's going to, again, pull from there. Some of the layers that are there are already exist. So those will not be done. And it is pulled. Okay, so what is seeing? Download newer image for this. Redis is now started. So we have started this Redis into the run command. So when I use the run command and give a particular image name, if it doesn't present, 
then what happened is is basically pull then it started running okay let us look into docker ps and let us remove by the container id or by the name you need to first stop the container by the name and then we can remove the container by the name also there is no docker image so let's take care so how can you run this together so these are basic basic commands are there apart from we have docker push docker login docker build those are the other command so let us before going to the volume let's see our applications docker file what is having this this is our docker file that is our service application so what is a docker file docker file is nothing but it's a just like our gradle we have the build file so it is a docker file that we can build locally okay so what we start with always we start from a form form says that what is the base image okay so here open jdk 17 and alpine distribution of linux has been used so a base image has been put then it define a working directory slash ether within the physical drive the ether is there then comes the whatever in your current folder to copy everything and put it in within the ether drive so our application code goes inside Okay, then you execute by run command. So what you need to do, you need to build this a uh, jar file, right? So Gadel, we can have a service dot assemble, right? No demon and stack trace. So that will create your package jar file. Okay, and that is out here. Now we are running, and here you are choosing a different aliases. For one for building stage, one for running stage. Now here in this is like APK is the package manager. So APK add curl. So here we are adding curl. Okay. And then home slash app is the working directory. Then you are copying between the two Docker path, physical path, separate path images. We just copy. So it's a multi-image build, right? Docker form builder from this alias builder, ether service docker layers leave that you're copying to the home application leave. Then you are copying the docker layer resources, you're copying to the app resources, and layer application the jar, you are copying in this jar. Then you are exposing the ports. That means you are exposing this two port as a container port 8080. And 818082. Now comes the entry point. So what is the entry point is about? That which script or startup script are going to be executed. The startup script is Java slash jar slash home app application jar. So that means Java jar, then jar command is used okay now is it possible to build this docker file okay let's open up the console out here this has been we are building a custom image so here you can see docker build I do that what happened it says failure why is it failure require at least one argument 
from where you want to building it. I'm building it from here. What other options we have? We can check the help. So here you can give the tag name also. So I can tag it latest or certain version 1.0.0. Okay. So let's build it. And it will going to be doing the build. Based on that file, what are the steps that are mentioned? So it will take some time to build. So here, if that particular JDK is missing, it try to download. It create a word directory. So every line we write is basically a particular step that's going to be executed. Any questions so far? So it's sending the build context to the Docker daemon. So it will take some time to do the build. So if you want, we can ask questions at this moment. So what is first step is doing? Step one of 13, it downloading the open JDK 17 Alpine because that is not currently locally I have. So if I run this second time, this step will be skipped because it is already going to be there. There are like 15 lines within my code, and it removed the blank line and the commented. So there are like 13 steps it's going to be executing one by one by one.
we get stuck. Okay, I think we can stop now. It will take some time to build. Any questions, you guys have? Okay, let me pause the recording then. Thank you. Guys.